Over the years, you've probably heard your fair share of Pika Pikas, Chansey Chansey, or any Pokemon attempting to communicate by repeatedly saying its name over and over. And while Pokemon seem to be stuck playing an endless game of charades when communicating with their trainer, you probably hear Pokemon speaking to one another and think that they're just saying their names, and that's it. But what if I told you that they were actually speaking a separate, sophisticated language that has its own defined set of rules and words just like ours. Huh, I guess it's time for a good old science theory. Pokemon has always been such a feel-good show to watch and play over the years. It has a keen sense of adventure, its characters make you feel more open to having new experiences, and the world is literally littered with best friends just waiting for you to catch them. But when watching certain parts of the show, like where Meowth translates Pokey speak to humans, or watching Pikachu and Ash's other Pokemon get lost and have a conversation with one another, it got me thinking, how do all Pokemon seem to be able to perfectly understand each other? What exactly is going on for Pokemon from completely separate parts of the world to be able to flawlessly communicate with one another, as if they're speaking some universal language known only to Pokemon that we humans just can't seem to figure out? By the conclusion of this video, you will never hear a Pika Pikachu quite the same way ever again. Again. To decipher how Pokemon actually communicate with one another, first we need to take a closer look at what is language. Whether you're shouting at your Charizard to flamethrower that wild vanillite, in English or Japanese, any language is comprised of what is called phonemes. Phonemes are all of the possible sounds that make up any language, and usually extend beyond the alphabet for that language. For example, the English language has 44 possible sounds that can be made but only 26 letters in its alphabet, which means that some sounds are made using pairs of letters, like the ch sound at the beginning of Charizard. Also, a phoneme is pronounced differently depending on where in the word it falls. The different possible pronunciations of a phoneme are called allophones, which is really what you hear all day. What's important here is that we humans communicate using different established sounds within our group, and if a phoneme doesn't exist in your language, then your brain literally is unable to distinguish or hear that sound in a word. It just skips over it as if it doesn't exist. So if you only speak French, you don't hear the name Hoot Hoot, you hear Oot Oot. And if you happen to speak the Rodica language that has the fewest phonemes in the world, consisting of an alphabet of 12 letters, you don't hear Infernape, you literally only hear the name Irape. But seeing how each Pokemon is only able to pronounce the same set of phonemes in its name over over and over, Pokemon aren't communicating based around a structured set of rules and sounds that every member can use to communicate like all human languages do. Put simply, they have no alphabet. There's something we're not seeing that's so different and solely unique to the Pokemon language itself. Something that humans may not be able to comprehend, but all Pokemon across the world can. Which would further explain why Ash's communication to Pikachu has to be based off of things other than the words that Pikachu makes. So continuing on in our discovery as the pioneers that we are, let's look at what exactly it means to communicate with another individual of your species or otherwise. What does it truly mean for you or even a Pokemon to convey to your whale lord that you want it to body slam that opposing Pichu? You see, all communication between humans, human to Pokemon, or Pokemon to Pokemon is comprised of three things, being the verbal words that are said, the verbal pitch, volume, and tempo PVT of the words, and any non-verbal body language. But not everything is as equal as one might think. By itself, body language makes up to 58% of communication, which explains why all of that aggressive pointing and intense facial expressions are truly necessary when communicating with your Pokemon during a battle, while your pitch, volume, and tempo account for a whopping 35% of communication, and lastly, the actual words or phonemes that you use to talk clocks in at a measly 7%. This could mean that the fact that Pokemon speak by only saying their names doesn't really matter, and rather they could just be really excellent body language communicators and readers, which would be a pretty lame and incomplete answer as to what's really happening. Despite the fact the actual words you use don't bear as much weight when it comes to communication, it's still far easier to hold a conversation with 
someone who is fluent in the same language as you are. Could you imagine trying to explain to your Pichu that you needed to charge your phone through the appropriate port just enough so that you can call for help to get out of any of Pokemon's nightmares forests without blowing it up? Another Pokemon could since they apparently are born fluent in this secret, non-phoneme, nonsense language, but you on the other hand are completely screwed. I mean the language is apparently the greatest hidden trade secret of all time and it's no wonder that no human knows it since it has zero structure and no apparent alphabet that matters, it's just gibberish for all we know. <sighs> Strangely enough, Pokemon are born with vocal cords just like humans. Meowth was able to teach himself how to speak English, showing that Pokemon do indeed possess the necessary vocal faculty and brains to understand more than the simple commands their trainers use. We even see Pokemon like Koopa, Slowking, and Rotom being able to fluently speak human languages. Even many psychic types are able to communicate with humans in human languages via telepathy. Heck, even Pikachu spoke that one time, and it was really touching, and weirded the heck out of the fanbase at the same time. But save for these few examples, a Pokemon being able to physically talk to humans is still really rare, given that they are certainly intelligent enough to have a clear grasp of language, and to be able to construct their own. Meowth serving as a translator between Pokemon and people proves that Pokemon do have some sort of language known only to them. So what then? There's something hidden to the eyes and and ears of humans going on here. Beyond phonemes, beyond body language, some real scientific reason that makes it so Pokemon can understand each other while humans try as they might, cannot. And the answer is truly fascinating. In fact, most humans wouldn't even think of this as they are impossible of experiencing it for themselves. After watching episode after episode, noting the obvious cues in body language, the changes in their pitch and volume, even seeing if there's a discernible pattern between between a Pokemon saying part of its name or its entire name and just looking for something that would indicate some sort of rule that this Pokemon language abides by, I was stuck. The language of Pokemon followed nothing. Maybe Pokemon talking to each other simply happens because the writers say it does. Until I saw something, a very real, real world science phenomenon that provides an obvious and pretty incredible answer. Humans are pretty darn great at hearing. We are able to hear a majority of sounds well enough to pinpoint the exact location of a horde of beedrills flying at us from far away and the faint chuckles of a nearby ghost Pokemon. Pokemon, but compared to a large majority of the world's animals, we aren't even close to the top. But what truly is better about the hearing of other animals? It's not just that they are able to hear sounds from farther away, or that they are able to detect sounds at extremely quiet levels that go completely unnoticed by humans, which many of them are, it's that many animals, like ones with rounded or cone-shaped ears that are easily controllable, like dogs, elephants, horses, mice, rabbits, bats, even the tiny hedgehog can generally hear sounds at much higher frequencies. Humans are able to hear sound frequencies between the range of 20 to 20,000 hertz, which is rather impressive, but many animals are able to hear sounds vibrating at ranges up to 68,000 hertz higher than humans, while Pokemon like Noibat can hear sounds vibrating at frequencies up to 200,000 hertz that humans are simply physically in capable of hearing. And you might be thinking, what about the many Pokemon around the world that aren't walking around with sizable ears that just flap in the wind? What about Pokemon like Steelix, Charmander, any water, bug, rock, fairy, flying, or poison type for that matter? I mean, a whole host of Pokemon don't seem to have ears. So what do they do? Well, turns out having a large pair of ears isn't necessary to have extraordinary hearing. Ted explain how many of the Pokemon we see throughout the show actually hear, actually capture sounds. Even most real world insects are able to hear sounds at incredible frequencies to keep up with their natural predators. Like the wax moth who stands at the top of the hearing pyramid who is able to hear sounds up to 300,000 hertz. So why? Why does any of this matter? Well, being able to hear and thus communicate at higher frequencies means that animals have a very large range of options for talking with each other.
each other. When looking at water animals like dolphins, there's much evidence that dolphins talk to each other, having assigned specific sounds at specific frequencies as words and names for specific things. Researchers were even able to show that the sounds fruit bats make aren't random, but are actually noises of them arguing about food, disputing their sleeping spots, and letting others know if they're getting too close for comfort. They even use a different tone of voice and frequency to communicate with each individual bat within the group. And it makes sense that Pokemon would have their own language, as they are shown to possess a much higher level of intelligence than animals in our world. They all also have the necessary internal machinery required to hear sounds at much greater frequencies than humans. Not just because most of their real world counterparts already do, but unlike all of the animals in our world, all Pokemon descend from Mew, a single psychic Pokemon who is based off of a cat, if Mew's name didn't give that away, which would potentially give all of them the opportunity to evolve over the years while keeping the same required internal ear structures to hear sounds at higher frequencies, if it wasn't weeded out through natural selection. So whenever you see two or more Pokemon talking to each other, why they may not be able to produce different phonemic sounds outside of their own name, instead they are able to communicate with each other based purely on the frequency and tone of voice they choose to use, with each combination of vocal tone and frequency standing for a different word or name of something. They have no need of a standardized alphabet or to be able to make different words for that matter. While we humans only hear the same thing being repeated over and over within the bounds of our hearing range, Pokemon hear much, much more. Now if you're still in the gutter on this scientific theory, then here's one last big fact to convince you that your Charmander is definitely talking to you using its own sophisticated language. According to a large scale review of many published studies, most animals from birds to elephants and literally fireflies take turns on whose turn it is to talk, showing that just like humans, they too are able to have conversations. Now if you want to watch a video that takes a deep dive into how the science of something awesome works, then check out this video.